Today I am here at DC Pianos in Berkeley, California, but today I'm in a section of the store that I've never actually been in before. I'm in their upstairs area that, like I just said, I've never visited before. But lately I've been getting an influx of comments of people saying that I should start reviewing more affordable pianos. Because honestly, many of the pianos that I do review are high-end and they're rather expensive. So today I decided I would cater to those of you who wish to see more affordable piano reviews. And today I'm going to be comparing two pianos of a relatively equal price, of a relatively equal size, and also of a relatively equal age. Also, as an added bonus, they're almost the same color. So what I'm going to be doing, as I said, is comparing them and talking about the benefits and the drawbacks of both of them. The one I'm sitting at here is a Baldwin Hamilton, which back in the day, this one I believe was made in 19, the 1970s. They're both in the 1970s. Don't remember the exact years, but they're both in the 1970s. When these were new, they were very well known for being used in practice rooms in conservatories. And when I get around to playing them, I think you'll be able to tell why. One added bonus benefit, quirky feature about this particular piano is the way that it opens up. Most pianos, there's this top lid that opens up and then to access the innards of the action and all that stuff, you have to pull off the front panel. In this, it's more like the hood of a car. The entire thing just opens up like this. And then there's a little prop here that does that. And so that is how you're able to access the piano. So to tune it, you have to do that, but also to maintain the piano, to take the action out, to work on it. If something, actually something wouldn't fall inside because the lid doesn't open, so that's another bonus. Um, so, you know, to do any kind of work on the piano, that's all you have to do. So it is a little bit simpler to work on than a piano that has a more traditional design like this Kimball over here. This should be in frame. This simply opens up and that's your lid, and then the front panel comes off, and it's a little bit more um, involved to get into than a piano like this. This one here, this just opens up, and that's all there is. So as if from a technician standpoint, that is an added bonus, and that is something kind of interesting and unusual about the Baldwin. There's a warning here that says to make sure that the fallboard's in the open position, so let me make some noise while I do that too. So that is a quick little overview of the Baldwin Hamilton. Like I said, they were very well known for being in practice rooms in conservatories. Now let me hop over to the Kimball and give you a quick little overview of that one as well. So here I am sitting at the Kimball, and to be honest with you, there's not a whole lot to say about it. It's a really traditional, standard piano. There's no special features or really odd things to talk about it. As I said earlier, it does have a more traditional type of lid design where this part opens up like that, and then the front panel comes off as a separate thing rather than one whole unit. That's a very traditional design on upright pianos. The Baldwin is actually the rather odd one out. They were really the only ones that I know of to use a design like that. It's actually a pretty cool one though, honestly. Because uh, this one here you have to fight with the front panel and get it off and go put it somewhere else and that one you just open it up like a hood. It's really cool. This also has a neat Kimball logo as well and those are really the only two unique features that there are to talk about this particular piano. So without any further ado, let me get started and play some stuff on it. Uh, I think that what I will do for both of these is simply play a Clair de Lune. That's going to be my test piece for both of these. It's a common piece that many people practice and many people learn so I'm going to kind of of imagine that I'm a piano student and I'm practicing on both of these pianos and at the end I'm going to tell you which one would be better for practicing and which one would be better to own. So without any further ado, let's close this lid to make the comparison nice and fair. They're supposed to do that. And let me go over to the Baldwin and play Claire de Lune and then I'll come over here, play the same exact thing and then talk about it. Hope you enjoy.
So that was Claire de Lune on the Baldwin Hamilton and the Kimball Upright. So now I'm going to be telling you which one I like more. And the first thing I want to say is that I think both of them are equally playable. They're right about, you know, as far as playability is concerned, what you can do with both of them, they're probably about the same. I didn't have any true difficulties playing Claire de Lune, although there is, I think, I think it's a C sharp right here on the Kimball that's a little bit slow to come up with the pedal. That's most likely a action part that just needs a little bit of lubrication, very simple fix. I've actually fixed this before on many pianos. If you're holding the pedal down and there's a key that's slow to come up, there's two things that generally will, it, it'll be, it'll either be the key bushing that will need to be eased or it will be an action component inside that's a little bit sticky and just put some lubrication on there and it will be good to go. It's not a huge thing, but it did throw me for a loop on the Kimball, so there was that. But other than that, I'd say that action-wise, these are pretty much equivalent. However, there is a benefit to one of them, so maybe that's not entirely true. I do personally prefer the action on the Baldwin. I feel that there's more control over over the dynamic range with that action. With the Kimball, I find that even if I play it very quietly, the quietest I can get it to go feels like medium medium loud, mezzo forte. That's about as quiet as it can go. And of course, if you played it loud, it would be loud. And if you played this loud, it would be loud. But this, I feel like I can actually get a true forte, I mean, a true piano sound. When you play it gently, whereas with the Kimball, if I do that on it, It just seems louder to me, and maybe it isn't. Maybe it's a trick of the ears because this piano has a brighter tone, but I feel like when I'm playing it, I don't have as much control with the Kimball, also because the action is a little bit lighter, and it kind of, when you when you press the notes, they have a tendency to, to swing down quickly, which is kind of, that's the way I think of it when a piano has a light action. It tends to swing down kind of unpredictably, and sometimes you'll be playing a little bit too loud, and there's not a lot you can do about it. However, am I being too critical on these? I don't really think I am. I'm just analyzing what is the benefits and drawbacks of each one. Obviously, these aren't intended to compete with the Concert Grand. These are, these are meant to be more affordable instruments. This would make a fine first piano. This would probably make a good second and maybe third piano as well. I think it would last a little bit longer, both on build quality as well as what the growing pianist could do with the piano. This would make a good first piano. Get a piano like this for your kid, let them fart around on it for a while, but they'd quickly outgrow it, I think, especially if they take a liking to the piano and really start to improve. With a piano like the Baldwin over here, I feel like if they took a liking and decided to really start improving on a piano and they kept getting better, I think the Baldwin would last them longer as a pianist because it just has a little bit more control. And also, in my opinion, the tone is a bit more desirable. The Kimball is bright and sparkly and it's it works it works fine <laughs> The tone of it reminds me a lot of what one of my jazz piano teachers used to have in his little teaching room. Sounds just like his piano. Um, so there is that, you know, it works, it's fine, but the Baldwin is a little bit more refined, it's a little bit more warm, it's a little bit more gentle sounding, and I personally prefer that, but again, the tone, they both work. They're both fine. But I personally prefer the Baldwin. If I had a child and I was getting them their first piano, I between these two, I would certainly choose this Baldwin. I've had good experiences with Baldwin myself. They were very, very reliable pianos back in the day. I have a 1977 SF10 that I haven't used or done videos on in years, but that was my practice piano for many years. It's very reliable, very durable. They haven't had any problems with it at all. and. Baldwins were just very solidly made pianos. This one was no exception. That's why they put them in teaching rooms. They had a, a adequate sound and adequate feel and they'd last for many years. So hopefully you guys enjoyed this review, this video, this, yeah, this video about more budget-friendly pianos, let's put it that way. Many people, like I said, have been asking me for that, so I figured I'd start it here at DC Pianos. They have a large room upstairs that's full of many budget-friendly pianos, but I decided to do a video on these two taller pianos because the bass ends on them would be a bit more desirable than on a spinet piano. A spinet piano also would work just fine for a first piano, but again, the bass end on both of these 
is going to be a little bit better than on a spinet piano, and between the two, I think the Baldwin also has the better bass end. This one might need a bit of a tune. Yeah, it needs a bit of a tune. And the Baldwin just has a bit more of a fatter sound to it, which I personally prefer. So again, hopefully you enjoyed this video. If you did, you might want to go check out my channel. If you have any questions or comments or suggestions for other things to review, do let me know down in the comment section below. It's fun to review things that you guys want me to review. If you guys liked it, you might want to go check out my channel if you're new here. I have lots of cool videos of pianos, organs, keyboards, and anything with a keyboard attached to it. So if you guys like that, you might want to go check that out. If you do, thank you very much. You might want to think about subscribing, and if you do that, thank you very much as well, and I'll see you in the next video. Goodbye.